And Syracuse controls the toss. What should we pay attention to early? Well, for Syracuse, certainly watch and see if they get Carmelo Anthony started down low, then extend his offensive game. For Oklahoma, they're going to have to rebound. That's going to be the key to their success. Here's Warwick inside, dumps it down to fourth. Turnaround jump hook and air ball. And a foul called against OU. Hollis Price picks up the foul. So Gwet Dwayne embodying the ball to McNamara. Back to Dwayne who rises. Rebounded and stuck back in by Warren. And that's why I say Oklahoma has the rebound. Syracuse a terrific offensive rebounding team. They get a lot of their offense on putbacks. Hakeem Warwick, a sophomore from Philadelphia, coming off a 15-point game on 6 of 12 shooting against Auburn. And if you're Oklahoma, you've got to have patience. You've got to explore this 2-3 zone, make it move, and also go inside, find the soft spots below the free throw line as well as the short corners. Here's White off the dribble. Picks it back out to D'Angelo Alexander, the freshman, for to shoot. Hollis Price won't fall for him. Carmelo Anthony with the rebound. McNamara in transition. Pulls up off the dribble. High and in. Another element of Syracuse's game is they like to get out in transition. They scored on average 80 points a game this season, so they like to get up and down. Jerry McNamara with nine points against Auburn. He's got a big following here from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Syracuse with the early lead. Again, there's the patience by Oklahoma. You got to make that defense move. You got to create some gaps that you can get into. Alexander as the shot clock winds down. Oklahoma. A little confused by this Syracuse zone. And again, look at the ball movement, but you got to recognize the shot clock's running down. Three, two, and you're forced into a bad shot. There's such a thing as too much patience. Now Warwick with the jam, but he steps on the baseline. But make no mistake, that was a statement. Syracuse beginning to go inside. Hakeem Warwick with a nice spin move on Johnny Gilbert right now. Gilbert's surprised by the quickness. Again, just stepped on the baseline, but you can bet Oklahoma noticed that. This is the third overall meeting between Syracuse and Oklahoma. The last coming in 1984. OU winning 98-91. Wayman Tisdale with 33 points. Inside Jabari Brown. Up and in and the foul. Well, we talked about going inside against the 2-3 zone. It doesn't work unless you at least move from side to side. That time, a nice job of finding a baseline runner. That soft spot, that short corner is where a lot of opportunity can come if you move the zone. So Jabari Brown looking to complete the conventional three-point play at the line. He's a junior. As you take a look at his numbers against Butler from the U.S. Virgin Islands. And the free throw is good. 17.40 to go here in the first half. Four to three, Syracuse. You know, Oklahoma's a veteran team for the most part. They're able to weather that huge crowd that gets into this ball game as Syracuse continues to score. But they got to make some stops in order to quiet them down, and get that advantage away from Syracuse. Carmelo Anthony was 0 for 4 in the first half versus Auburn, and he comes up with the steal. Here comes Anthony, the freshman. To McNamara. Now Dwayne straight to the bucket. Timeout OU. 16.59 to go. Syracuse up 8 3. See, they're the underdog, so they're going to have folks on their side. It wouldn't matter where they were. Texas playing in San Antonio, and Hollis Price throws it out of bounds. That's the third turnover for the Sooners here in the first half. You know, it's plays like that that are not affected by the crowd. That's just miscommunication, maybe a bit of jitters by Oklahoma. Again, this is a veteran team. They've been to the Final Four, most of these guys, last year. 
Syracuse starts the game four for six from the field. And they have four points in transition already. Wet Dwayne to Warwick. And he is called for the offensive foul. Nice job by Jabari Brown stepping in and taking the charge. And it's usually the defense that stabilizes the team. And Brown does a nice job of stepping in right there. Goes to penetration quickly. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to step up to penetration, make the ball handler do something else. If you wait until he gets to you under the basket, Warwick's putting it down. Abby Arad checks in for Oklahoma. He's number two at 25 on Thursday against Butler. White hesitation off the dribble. Loose ball tap rebounded by Anthony. Oklahoma is relying too much on one on one on too much ball handling to try to get into that zone. It's got to be done by pass. Now Anthony the crossover. Inside knocked away Booker with the steal. Here comes Evi Arras. Speed dribble into the front court. Lost an edge and travels. Fourth turnover for Oklahoma in the first half. 15-55 to go. Syracuse with an 8-3 lead. They had to beat the two best defensive teams in America in Pittsburgh and Kentucky. And when you talk about Kansas, uh, it's great to see Roy Williams crew, but my boys Heinrich and Nick Collison absolutely got the job done. Brett Duane curling around the screen, banking at home. He has four. And Syracuse takes a 10 to 3 lead. They made their last five shots. Aquanis White directing traffic inside. And the Sooners throw it away again. Their fifth turnover. Oklahoma can't be too anxious and run out of their defense right now. But Dwayne is just going to make a cut right down the middle as White tries to follow him. When you're on the weak side of the ball and you got a guy cutting around a pick, you got to go through that pick or you got to switch. White gets caught on and gets hurt. McNamara to Anthony. Hard jab step fires. And book out clears. Now Price. Abby Ara rises. Missed that one badly. Chases down his own rebound and banks it home. Plus the foul. And that's the versatility of Abby Ara. He can certainly beat you from outside, but with his size, he's able to go to the offensive glass. And I said before, Oklahoma will have to rebound. They'll have to compete on the boards in order to win this basketball game. Abby Ara gave up his starting job. He wasn't playing well earlier in the season. He called Coach Kelvin Sampson while the coach was at church and said, look, I think you should take me out and put the freshman D'Angelo Alexander in the game. And how many kids are that unselfish to give up their starting position as a senior? Well, it's admirable, but you got to work on your game and get back in that lineup, which Arad did. And again, we talk about that injury to his non-shooting hand, his wrist, his left wrist. He's overcome that right now in that game against Butler. He was spectacular. Jabari Brown with the steal. Watch out. And the Sooners got it to two. Brown with five points. Timeout Syracuse. As Jim Beheim stares down West Dwayne. Better step up and meet him. So here comes McNamara along with Warwick. Dwayne Anthony and that's Jeremy McNeil. McNeil that's where he's got to start start his offense in deep because he's a tough matchup and banks it in hard four points for Carmelo Anthony Syracuse taking a 12 8 lead Price working hard as a baseline cutter. Now White off the dribble. Cut off nicely by Dwayne. Ten to shoot. Juanis to the basket. Oh, he got the runner to fall. The key part for Oklahoma is the fact that White got into the paint against his zone. Been able to pass there, so they'll have to do it off the dribble. Now Anthony to the basket. He's a slasher. 
And he's doing exactly what you talked about, establishing himself down low early. Six points for Carmelo Anthony. Jabari Brown tries to stop it. No. Partially deflected by Warren. Good thought by Brown. Get, couldn't finish. McNamara throws it out of bounds. Fifth turnover for Syracuse. Now near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed more than $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. 12.54 to go in the first. Syracuse by four. Oklahoma the number one in the East. They advanced to the final four last season, defeating Missouri. Syracuse, the number three. That one off the mark. Jabari Brown, though, with the great follow and finish. We talk about rebounding against the zone. You got to go to spots. The zone is covering spots. They're not blocking you out. So offensive rebounders find an area and command it. Brown, one of the best athletes on this team. Now McNamara. Willie Edelin is checked in. Number 14 with the ball. Tough shot short. Brown with the rebound. And he can bring it up the floor himself. That one deflected out of bounds. Last touch by Syracuse. Well, we talked about the fact that during this tournament, Carmelo Anthony hasn't put together two good halves. That's because many times he starts his offense way too deep. This game, he's starting down low, starting inside the three-point arc, and he's having great success. Inside, Johnny Gilbert can't hold on. Wasn't expecting that pass. And the Sooners turn it over. They're sixth of the first half. Weak side, McNamara rising fire. Way too strong. Rebounded and stuck back in by Warren. Great position for one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. And it was a poor blockout technique by Oklahoma. Nobody put a body on an orange shirt. Six points for Hakeem. Price got a good look. Tip by Gilbert. Who wants it? Look at Jabari Brown dive and get a timeout on the play. Jabari Brown leading this Oklahoma team, 16-12 Syracuse. The East Regional Final, 16-12 Syracuse with the lead over Oklahoma. A one versus a three. So far, Quanis White has two points. He's the only Oklahoma starter to score. Around the leader and buries it. Again, at 6-5, if you can get Ebi Ara in that pain, he can do so many things. That time, the shot was available, but he's got the ability to pass as well if he draws defenders. Warwick across the lane, inside to McNeil, who just jams it down, but he traveled. But a good sign for Jeremy McNeil. He continues with his aggressive play. Timeout on the floor. 16-14 Syracuse, the orange shooting 62% from the field, but they've turned it over six times. Oklahoma shooting 50%, they've turned it over six times. Ara White steps into a three. And that one goes out of bounds. Well, you can tell there's a definite inside bent. When you look at Anthony and Warwick's numbers to the Syracuse strategy, seven of their eight field goals have been inside the paint. Syracuse leading the battle of the paint, 14-8. Josh Pace checks in along with Carmelo Anthony, Warwick, McNeil, and Edelin, 20-footer Anthony. Short, rebounded with two hands by Gilbert. Now a rod. Syracuse, they can get back into that zone very quickly. Well, I was just going to say Oklahoma trying to rush it up, but again, a good job by Syracuse. I mean, they're, they've been at this all year now. They recognize teams want to beat them down before the zone gets set. So they got a special focus on getting back. Around the hop and uh, travel against Debbie Ara. You see Kelvin Sampson telling him on the jump stop to pass it off. You come to a jump stop, you're going to have to go to the basket. 
Blake Johnson enters for Oklahoma. And we saw Syracuse face Auburn on Friday. They led by as many as 17, but once Auburn figured out that zone, they managed to whittle away at the whittle away at the lead and ended up losing by 179-78. So it takes a little while. And we get a whistle. What Auburn was able to do is isolate that guy in the soft spot right along the free throw line. That was Marquise Daniels, and he recognized that the back guy, the middle back guy of that 2 3 zone, it was a one on one situation, and he played it as such and had great success. Three second violation against Syracuse. Under 10 to play. Here comes Johnston. See, with Oklahoma, they're not really getting the guy below that free throw line. You look at the middle of the zone, and it's pretty much wide open. There's no one there to occupy. Jeremy McNeil, the middle guy along the back line. It's Johnston, Alexander fires and rips it. Nicely done by D'Angelo Alexander. But I guess when you're hitting like that from the perimeter, you don't need that middle guy. The first lead for the Sooners. Alexander, a freshman out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. Inside McNeil. And a foul on the floor under the basket. Boy, watch Carmelo Anthony. You talk about a ball handler at 6'8". He turns, he goes baseline, and watch the hell come. Look at him change direction right there. And that's what creates the opening to get McNeil inside the paint. A lot of guys would get stuck there on the baseline, get double teamed, you'd have to kick it back outside. I'm telling you, you're marveling at some skill right there by a freshman. Now Anthony, spinning. Fires and he gets it. Oh, man. <laughs> Eight points for Carmelo. What do they say? He's fresh. <laughs> He's mellow. <laughs> Syracuse reclaiming the lead by one. Johnston. Weak side. Alexander again. And rebounded by Edelin. Good job, though, by Brown and hitting opposite. Anthony underneath. Up and in. Carmelo Anthony doing a little bit of everything. And he's doing it close to the basket. Most of his damage is done there. The occasional jumpers are falling because of his confidence in his field goal percentage. As they rise to their feet in Albany, Syracuse fans, 2017. Again, it bears repeating, Oklahoma's a veteran team. They should not wilt under this pressure. The orange on the break, McNamara to the cut. He gets it to fall. Time on OU. 7.26 to go. Syracuse up. Look at his numbers right there. Remember, he was 0 for 4 in the first half versus Auburn. He's 5 for 7 today. 10 points in the first half. Syracuse shooting 65%. White getting in deep to Brown. A 13-foot jump shot. He babied it. Booked out with the rebound. Too strong. And Billy Edelin brings it up the floor. And if you're Syracuse and you're looking for Carmelo Anthony to put together two good halves, you're off to a good start. Here's McNeil. Syracuse turns it over. Price right there. Here's where you got to capitalize on the turnover situation. Offensive foul called against Quantas White. Out of control. 6.42 to go in the first half. 22-17. Anthony wanted to always get off from beyond the three-point arc and maybe took far too many shots than he necessarily had to. They want to play to their advantage, and Anthony's size and his versatility is a great advantage for them. He started out inside and he's paid dividends. Tie up between Bookout and Carmelo Anthony. And the possession arrow favors Oklahoma. But if you're the Sooners, you're in good shape right here. Basically playing a road game with so many Syracuse fans in attendance. 
down 22-17. That's not very much. No, it's not. But Kelvin Sampson would like to see his team play smoother against the 2-3 zone. Move the ball, hit those soft spots, make the zone change. Oklahoma's had a lot of ragged points off of loose balls. They haven't had an awful lot of penetration in their paint. That's what they need to do, go inside. But Bookout's got to deliver. Bookout misses his second shot, and he's been terrific over the last couple of games. Warwick fires and hits a 16-footer. Hakeem Warwick with six points. And that shot stretched Warwick's range, and that's why Gibson didn't come out on him. But if he starts hitting that, he presents a whole set of problems. 8-0 run for Syracuse. Price inside. Short. Knocked out of bounds. We'll head the other way. And now they reverse the call. We'll stay right here. So the Sooners today, Bookout and Hollis Price, scoreless so far. Well, Bookout, you expect him to get the ball inside, at least change the zone, maybe make some shots. But Hollis Price, you absolutely, if you're a Sooner fan, you absolutely want to see him get going quickly. Bookout coming into this game and hit 17 of his last 20 shots over the past two games at 16 versus Butler. 22 versus Cal, and the Sooners throw it out of bounds. Ten turnovers in the first half for OU. So I think Oklahoma's making a big mistake by not attacking the zone below the free throw line. They got to have somebody like Ebi Ara, who's capable of going off the dribble as well as hitting that shot. He's the guy that needs to move into that spot. Anthony Edelin, Warwick, McNeil, and McNamara for Syracuse. Here's Warwick again. And Alexander pulls it up. Obviously, Oklahoma willing to give Warwick that shot. Alexander, baseline dribble. He babied it, but draw the foul. Nicely done by the freshman, who will go to the free throw line and shoot two. Syracuse fouls her to Hakeem Warwick. So Hakeem Warwick picks up his second. He fouled out. On Friday versus Auburn, after scoring 15 points, Angelo Alexander misses the first Monday on CBS. Don't miss David Letterman's return to the Late Show with guest Billy Crystal. Monday on CBS, America's most watched network. D'Angelo played at Midwest City High School with Sheldon Williams, who is a member of Mike Krzyzewski's Duke team. Second free throw good. And here comes Ebi Ara back into the game. Alexander takes the seat. Oklahoma came down jumping up and down showing zone but really it was a man to man and that's what happened. You had McNamara hesitate but then the offensive rebounding as guys focus on the ball rather than blocking out and Oklahoma's making a huge mistake by not putting bodies on Syracuse as that ball goes to the rim. Wes Duaney with his sixth point largest lead of the game for Syracuse and here's an interesting stat for you. When Dwayne scores in double figures, Syracuse is 21 and 1 on the season. He has six. Nine to shoot for Hollis Price. Working hard, whizzes it out of bounds. But they say it's deflected by Dwayne. Well, I think Hollis Price got deflected on that one. Well, yes, he did. Well, you talk about being physical. Normally you think about it down in the trenches under the basket, but outside that zone. Bumping guys off the dribble. Five to shoot for White. Down the lane, and that one deflected again with one to shoot. Kelvin Sampson is upset with the way his team is attacking this zone. He calls timeout. Back after this. One on the shot clock for Oklahoma. They look inside and just turn it over. Juanis White. Throws it away. Meanwhile, 
Syracuse breaks down the floor and turns it over as well and the winner of this game takes on the winner of our next game between Texas and Michigan State and you really have to tip your hat to Tom Izzo nobody thought his Spartans would go this far especially to the Elite Eight. Well this is all about not having to be the best team in the nation throughout the year you only got to be the best during this six game tournament and Tom Izzo has primed his team given them confidence some big wins obviously to get there. And one of his protégés doing extremely well Tom Crean who coached for Tom Izzo at Michigan State advancing to the final four with his Marquette squad upsetting top seeded Kentucky. Now a raw from deep. And it goes out of bounds Oklahoma just off their game. Well they're in the first half they can't penetrate that zone often enough off the bounce. And they're certainly not putting people in position to do it on the pass so they're forced to shoot from the perimeter. Hence you look at the numbers right there 7 of 21 from the field. Oklahoma shooting 33 percent 1 of 7 from the three point line. Inside Warren blocked by Brown into the hands of a Terrific timing by Jabari Brown on that block he was behind his teammate trying to defend Warren. He's been the best player on the floor for the Sooners today. Weak side white slips. Now a rod explodes down the baseline. The kick price in and out. Hollis Price 0 for 5 and a foul coming up against Syracuse. Field goal percentage. OU they average 45 percent today shooting 32 percent and they've turned it over 11 times already in the first half and they're at their season average of 11.9 basically 12. That last possession was a good job by a rod getting in and getting up price price can't make any. Sooners turn it over once again McNamara catch and shoot rebounded by Anthony who rolls it in. Again another failure on the defensive boards by Oklahoma and Syracuse cashes in. Not only do they have to block out they've got to be strong with it. Largest lead of the game for Syracuse. And a foul called on Jeremy McNeil. Trying to force book out out of the paint. And here comes Johnston. But as I mentioned earlier Syracuse got off to a great start against Auburn leading by as many as 17 but the Tigers rallied in the second half and managed to close to within one and according to them they didn't lose they ran out of time losing 79 78 inside a rock the floater no what a great rebound. By McNeil. But make no mistake on this level, the teams are just too good not to have two and three runs in them. So Oklahoma's just not out of the picture yet. Brett Dwayne fouled on the baseline. He'll go to the line. So Brett Dwayne, a senior from Bloomington, Indiana, had a brother by the name of Dwayne Dwayne that played at Wisconsin and played in the Final Four. Dwayne, a native of the Sudan, his family escaped with their lives after a civil war broke out. Father is a teacher at the at Indiana University, rather. Second free throw, pure. And Quef Dwayne became a naturalized citizen last year, so he's wearing that flag on his jersey with pride, as well as that orange on his uniform. 30 18 Oklahoma has missed their last eight shots. Heavy rod down the lane. Johnston. Wow. 13 turnovers for the Sooners. And we talk about this crowd and yes it's an advantage for Syracuse but I'm telling you right now Oklahoma is rattled by the zone. They're not rattled by this crowd. They're too much of a veteran team to get upset. They've been in big gyms 
on the opposing guy's floor in the Big 12. They know how to handle it, but this zone has got them absolutely baffled. They're not getting the ball inside where they need to. A rod tries to do it off the dribble, but he doesn't get any help. And Anthony shuffles his feet, travels. But since Oklahoma led the game 17-16, Syracuse is currently on a 14-1 run. You know we talk about the two three zone and a lot of people think it's a passive zone that just moves from side to side. Uh uh. These guys will double you in the corners. They'll take away the high post if necessary. They'll double down low. They change on you. So it's just not the same thing you see every trip down. See Gilbert is OK up there but he's kind of the wrong guy because he can't turn and face and make things happen by reading the middleman in the zone. Ball stolen away. Johnston picks it up. Finds a raw nice look to book out as Oklahoma gets an easy basket book out with his first basket of the game shot clock turned off 19 seconds remaining in the first half Syracuse by 10 boy what a lift it would be for Oklahoma to make this stop going out. And obviously Syracuse would be on cloud nine if they can score. Anthony from deep. And that is it. Syracuse led by as many as 12 in the first half. They head into the locker room with a 30 to 20 lead. Well, Kelvin Sampson is just absolutely going to have to find a way to solve this zone. What he has put out there now just isn't working. So Carmelo Anthony back on the floor. Syracuse with the basketball to begin the second half. The backdoor war somehow muscles it in from McNamara. And that's saying something when you look at Warwick's body. <laughs> Not too many muscles there. He is a willowy looking player. Eight points, but he can jump out of the gym. Price with a good look short. Warwick, the aggressive rebound on the weak side. Here comes McNamara. Hollis Price 0 for 6, no points. Dwayne, a 15 foot pull up, no. Fort with the rebound and it's take back. Boy, big bucket by Craig Fourth. He's a guy that doesn't finish well around the basket. That should give him an awful lot of confidence and give his team confidence. Largest lead of the game for Syracuse. A minute in, here's Book out, and it rims off. Well, that time Oklahoma played the zone well, getting it to the top, a dump down low, but you got to finish. Bookout's got a dunk. Bookout just having an excellent. Let's go to. Guards of attacking and penetrating the zone and then kicking out for the easy shots. And you look at the defense right there, really playing tough on Bookout, making sure they don't get that inside game established. Jump shot, a raw, way off the mark. Bookout grabs it, tied up. The possession arrow favoring Oklahoma. And Kevin Bookout, not only a terrific basketball player out of Stroud, Oklahoma, but he set the Oklahoma State home run record the big fella hit 65 home runs in his career well, he's going to have to connect on some field goals get his team back in the ball game what did Greg Gumbel say about Walt Whitman during halftime anyway <laughs> here's White at the pro three point line off the mark rebounded by Jabari Brown one thing you got to say about Oklahoma much more aggressive now but still McNamara making the error. with the steal to Anthony rejected he's fouled. Again still making the errors against the two three and that leads to the transition opportunities and Carmelo Anthony we talk about all the elements of this game and the one thing that seems to be overlooked is ability to run out on a fast break he's done it a number of times today. And at that size, it's 6'8", going about 235. That's saying something. Anthony missing the first free throw. And everybody knows that Carmelo is from West Baltimore. Grew up in a tough neighborhood there. Raised by a single mother. His mom, Mary. 
father passing away when he was two years old. 13 points for Carmelo Anthony. 35 20. Syracuse. Largest lead of the game. See, Bookout is making himself available too late when the ball goes to the side. Dwayne in the front court. Stripped and fouled. Juanis White reaching in, but a nice pass by Carmelo Anthony. And that's the third foul on White. So, Quet Dwayne will go to the free throw line. He has eight points. Remember that stat, folks. Syracuse 21 and 1 when he scores in double figures. And he misses the first. Beginning April 10th, Tiger Woods goes to the unprecedented third straight green jacket against an all star field at Augusta National. The Masters is on CBS. You know, Gus, you talk about Dwayne's numbers and double figures and the 21 and 1 record. What that means is just illustrative of the fact that they're getting help for Anthony, getting help for McNamara and Warren. Syracuse team so young, so talented. Anthony, a freshman. McNamara, a freshman. Warwick, a junior. Now a raw baseline cut off. They turn it over. McNamara with numbers. In the corner, Dwayne fires. Now Hollis Price. Last trip down. Good opportunity to beat the zone, but Bookout didn't have his hands up. Ara across the lane. Too strong. Tapped around. Who wants it? Jabari Brown is there. Alexander sets. Short. Dwayne with the rebound. To Warwick. And it's knocked away by Alexander, who got back. Price tied up and will head the other way. I talk about Oklahoma being a veteran team, but right now they are absolutely rattled. They're probably moving a lot quicker than they're capable of reacting. They've got to slow it down a little bit. The idea is to make sure you get good shots and then take care of defense on the other end. You rush against this Syracuse zone and you rush against the Syracuse defense, they're going to find a way to turn it around against you and go the other way. And Oklahoma has gone close to four minutes without a point. They're 0 for 7 in the second half. Syracuse led at halftime 30 to 20 35 20 now now four facing down low knocked out of bounds Price and boy Hollis Price had his hands full guarding Carmelo Anthony he's given up about eight inches out there and still battled Inside Warwick. And there's 10 on the shot clock. Now you got Qantas White on Anthony on a switch. McNamara partially blocked into the hands of Anthony and a foul. Hollis, rather Qantas White, wrapping him up. And he picks up his fourth. Juanis White, one of their senior leaders for the Sooners, picking up his fourth foul with 15.51 to go in the second half. Not only is he the floor leader, but he's the guy who shoots the highest percentage on his team from three-point range, something they're going to absolutely need if they're going to get back into this ballgame. White was 37 of 63 as Anthony. Misses the jump shot to McNamara. Got it. Syracuse getting every loose ball. And the Orange take a 38-20 lead. They open up the second half on an 8-0 run. Oklahoma has missed 16 of their last 17 shots. Alexander Pass didn't even look room. at the basket. Price stolen away by.
by Johnston. Now Price sets this time and finally buries one. We got to start looking for Hollis Price. You got to start penetrating, getting inside the zone, make it contract, and now look for your three point shooters. That's going to carry you back if you're Oklahoma. First field goal of the game for Hollis Price. He's one for eight. But as you appropriately mentioned, they got to come up with loose balls, Oklahoma. They got to come up with rebounds, get a couple of trips from Syracuse is one and out. McNamara again. Loose. Who wants it? Yes, Anthony gets it again. What a quick jumper and puts it in. Doesn't look good for the Sooners. 40 23. Carmelo Anthony, 15 points, six rebounds. Inside book out. Shovels it inside Alexander. And that's what you have to do. You got to be able to get into the heart of that zone, force the back guys to come up and guard you, and then find people down low. There are plenty of openings. But Oklahoma just doesn't seem to want to attack that way on a consistent basis. McNamara down the lane, the running right hander is Jerry McNamara. Well, you cannot let a guy drive down the heart of your defense. When you're down these many points without paying the price. Time on OU. Syracuse, 13 minutes and 35 seconds away from New Orleans. His name will go down in infamy in Maryland history. <laughs> Hit that big shot against the Turks to put them out. In and out and back in for Hollis Price. So Price with back to back threes has six points now, 42 to 28. Fourth facing. Anthony really wanting to post up Johnston. Well, he's got an advantage every time he goes against that zone. And when he can't get it down low, he'll just step outside. That's what that inside play in the first half does. It gives him more confidence because his field goal percentage is high. He feels good about the basketball, and he can hurt you outside as well. 18 points for Carmelo Anthony. Price again. Loose ball tapped out of bounds by Johnny Gilbert. And so far, our number one seed is yet to advance this year with Kentucky and Arizona losing. Oklahoma on the ropes. 45 28. Fourth takes the shot. Sindre in, and he just snatches it. Well, out of the air. Zendre's in the game as well as Gibson because Kelvin Sampson recognized they were getting manhandled on the board. He needs some guys just to go get it, allow his perimeter guys to put the ball up at the basket. Price stripped, and he takes it away from Dwayne. Not a very good pass by Fort. Alexander down the lane. And a whistle. This one going against Fort. They call him for a forearm shiver. Well, Jim Beheim just got to relax a little bit. Everything's going his way right now. That's his third. Coach Beheim in his 27th year. He's been to the national title game twice. Most recently in 96, losing to Kentucky. Prior to that in 1987, when Syracuse fell to Keith Smart and the Indiana Hoosiers. Alexander getting the first one to go. And what he also has to do is continue to show some confidence in Craig Forth. Obviously, he needs him in this game to at least attack the boards. But if they are to advance, they're going to need fourth contribution going forward, particularly on that front line. And the ball thrown out of bounds. Great opportunity for Oklahoma. But it's been that kind of afternoon for Kelvin Sampson's team, unable to capitalize. for Oklahoma to generate any type of offense. If I'm Kelvin Sampson, I set some goals for my team. You take a look at the score, you're down 16. You want to tell them you want to be under 10 with about six minutes left. And then you can start feeling really good about yourselves. That means you have to dig in defensively, and that's a good start. Fourth turns it over. Price rolling around the screen. Alexander reverse layup is good. And the freshman is starting to catch fire. Nine points now. 
for D'Angelo Alexander. If you're Oklahoma, where do you want to be when the clock uh, has 10 minutes on? Well, you want to cut into this lead. You know, they're 14 points right now, but you know, if you can get it under 10 earlier, that's fine. But at least by six minutes, you want to have it under 10. That starts to put a little pressure on Syracuse, particularly after Thursday night against Auburn, where they let a lead dissipate in that game. Warren with the turnaround jump shot. 10 points for Hakeem Warren. Johnson thought about it. Backs it up. And resets. The screen from Zindre. Price. Oh, he banks it home. How'd he do that? Well, he did it off the dribble, able to get by that one defender and get into the heart of that zone. But the rest of it was Hollis Price in his heart. Inside and to the end, a foul. Go to NCAAsports.com for in-depth coverage of every NCAA championship, including updated brackets and recaps from the basketball tournament regional finals. It's all at NCAAsports.com. Wet Dwayne on the baseline, the inbounder. The Warwick back to Dwayne underneath, and he walks. Well, Hollis Price is starting to heat up. And certainly they need Hollis Price to establish that perimeter game. It's going to make it a little easier to get at the book out. There he beats the zone, gets into the heart, and over the seven-footer four. Price again, the leaner. Off the heel of the rim, loose ball squirts out, picked up by McNamara, and a foul. I believe it's Gilbert. Price with no points in the first half. Eight here in the second. Dwayne checks out of the game. Edelin back in. But Hollis Price is one of the toughest young men, brightest young men, sharpest kids you'll ever meet. He grew up in the Tough Desire projects in New Orleans. His family was so poor as he grew up with his grandparents, he had two shirts and two pair of pants. One shirt to wear, one pair of pants to wear, and the other to wash. Inside Anthony. Off the side of the backboard. Here comes Johnston looking for Price. And a whistle. In the backcourt, Carmelo Anthony wiped out on the sideline in front of the scorer's table. And I'm not sure what happened. We well, see him trailing the play, and boom, Zendre. That looked like Warren Sapp against the Green Bay Packer offensive lineman that time. Trying to shake up the freshman a little bit. Had no call. So De Alexander was called for a foul. Weird sequence there. Now Price again. Rebounded by Warren. Price 3 of 13 from the field. 47-33. 9.25 to go here in the second. Anthony, go up center. Offensive foul on Carmelo is second. To add insult to injury, there's Alexander on Anthony. That's a pretty good call. Alexander was set. Anthony really started, initiated the contact with the lean in. Johnston, Gilbert, along with Price, Alexander, and Zindre. Here's Johnston for three. Rebounded. Warren knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Warren. And his pro Syracuse crowd wants a foul every time Oklahoma brushes up against an orange jersey. And the crowds may have some points right here. That was just good hustle on the part of Oklahoma and Warren. But the fact of the matter is, Syracuse knows that they've got a battle. Oklahoma plays in the Big 12. Big physical. They're accustomed to this bumping and banging. The Big East is no slouch either, but Syracuse is going to have to revert to that Big East attitude. A turnover. And, and play physically. Matt DeMera to the basket. And he tried to reverse it. Matt DeMera scared that one was going to be blocked. And see, so you can't play frightened. Now Johnston around the screen, rips it. Blake Johnston. Blake Johnston. 
His first basket, the lead down to 12. Remember I said, if you're Kelvin Sampson, you want your team to get it under double digits with about six minutes left. So they're ahead of schedule. 8-16 to play. Back after this. It's all here tonight on CBS, America's most watched network. Edelin at the point. McNamara shifts to the two guard for Syracuse. Anthony Warwick and McNeil. Boy, in Oklahoma playing Carmelo Anthony much more of a physical type of defense. Hands on him, continue to push. Trying to take him out of the game. Here's Edelin at the free throw line. A double clutch. Jump shot is good. And Syracuse keeps throwing the freshman at you. You got Anthony, you got McNamara, and Edelin off the bench. Does his damage. And a foul called. Looks like Anthony has been called for the foul. And again, the impact on Anthony with this physical play kind of taking him out of the offense. Doesn't seem as willing to get involved. Look at the arms. Anthony's got to shake that off and play basketball. 49-35. 49-35 Syracuse. A three versus Oklahoma. A one. A ball thrown into the backcourt and stolen by Edelin to the basket. No! Anthony is there. A lot of foul on the play. We talk about Carmelo Anthony. He's going to have to get used to physical play. That is no accident right there. Zendre knocks him out. You can tell that that's the Oklahoma plan right now. That was earlier in the half. Since then, Carmelo Anthony has committed an offensive foul. Hasn't really been a factor on the offensive end for Syracuse. And we'll see how the young man responds to that physical play. If it seems to succeed, if Oak Syracuse moves on, you can expect other teams to look at playing him much more physically. And Edelin misses a pair. Joseph Zendre, a senior from Budapest, Hungary. Johnston inside off the window. Holy mackerel. Jabari Brown flushing it down. He has nine. And it bears mentioning again against Auburn in this regional semifinal. Syracuse jumps out to a big lead and it melted in the second half. They held on by one. Led by as many as 17. Went on to win it 79 78. You cannot relax out here. You got to continue to be assertive. And I don't like this right now. The idea of Syracuse looking like they want to play the clock a little bit. Locking foul coming up uh, against Johnston. You know, when you sit back there and you try to play the clock, it only gives you the opposite team some confidence. And this is the play that also gives them confidence. Jabari Brown making it happen right there for his team. Hit that offensive glass. So Billy Edelin from Silver Spring, Maryland. At 20 points versus Oklahoma State as he misses the first Syracuse three of nine from the free throw line. Edelin 0 for three. Now don't forget the winner of this game takes on the winner of Texas Michigan State in the south. That game coming up on CBS as Edelin gets the second to barely fall 50 37. Still Edelin didn't look very comfortable up on that free throw line. 68 percent shooter. He's tight. Ball knocked away by Edelin. Juanis White back in the game with four fouls. Alexander slashing. Lays it up and in. That's D'Angelo Alexander. Oklahoma refusing to die. Alexander with 11 points, 50 to 39. Here's that critical juncture right there. Syracuse has to find a way to score, get to the free throw line. Oklahoma gets it under 10. You can see a brand new team out there. Newfound confidence. McNamara cut off on the baseline. Here's Edelin to the bucket. Wraps it around. With the right hand by Warren. And that's what I mean by being more assertive, taking it to the basket instead of going east-west as they did in the last possession. 12 points for Hakeem. Syracuse is 550 away from their fourth. Final four. White rejected. McNeil got a hand on it. They're on their feet in Albany.
again, I think you still have to attack. Sitting back right now. Now they're into their offense. Shot clock running down at seven. Warwick dumps it down. Jam by Anthony. But I guess if you're going to execute like that, <laughs> doesn't matter. 20 points for Carmelo Anthony, the freshman sensation. 54 39 Syracuse. You know, Bookout has gotten to the point now where he's been denied so often when he gets open, he doesn't really want the ball. White from straight up. Loose ball and a foul coming up against OU. Shot clock running down. Here's the execution. A nice look right down low by Hakeem Ward. I don't even know if he saw Anthony. He just knew he'd be there. And look at the hands by Anthony. And again, once again, throwing over the defense. Shot clock running down. We talked about whether or not it was too soon to kind of take the air out of the ball. Well, Syracuse is getting it done. As long as you execute, it doesn't matter. So Hakeem Warwick goes to the line. He has 12 points and nine rebounds today. And he misses the front end of the one and one. Now White. Alexander on the baseline strip gets it back to Price. Edelin going up by and snatching it down. And that's the key. Holding on to that lead. You got to make sure you secure rebounds after the miss. Bring the house down. Bring the house down, exactly. Again, he's got the grip. Nice play by McNamara. Drawing the defender right there. Elevation, but no handle of the cargo. <laughs> Here's Evie around. This Oklahoma team, they've been rattled since the very beginning of this game. Ara, after scoring 25 versus Butler, has five today. Misses a pair from the line, gets the rebound. Down the lane, the kick, Alexander, got it. I'll tell you what, this young fella here, D'Angelo Alexander, came to play back right after this. Oklahoma out of timeouts, 18 fouls against OU, so Syracuse shoots one and one. 340 to go. Well, Oklahoma now they're in a half court zone press. They had their chances to get it under 10 a lot earlier because that's a psychological benchmark. But nevertheless, they continue to whittle away. But they got to do it on defense. This change of defense right now might wear them out though as they continue to chase. Back door and Warwick is fouled. Big day though for the freshman, Carmelo Anthony. And he's been able to do it, as we said, starting out down low, hitting the offensive glass, taking the short range jumpers and then going to the long range game. And again, he was the focus of some physical defense by Oklahoma. It's kind of taken him out of the game over the last couple of minutes, but his damage is done. As Ward misses the first, Carmelo Anthony, first team, all Big East, only the second freshman to ever be named first team all Big East. Who was the first? Brian Shorter from Pittsburgh. Now Pearl Washington. Pearl Washington from Brooklyn Boys and Girls High School. 319 remaining, 55-42, Syracuse. In their half court and the inability of Oklahoma to really establish an inside-out presence made those outside shots a lot more difficult. Get complete tournament stats at CBSSportsLine.com. From the side, ball ripped down by Edelin. Oklahoma trying to foul, and the officials wouldn't call it. To the point where Quantus White, I'm sorry, 
D'Angelo Alexander threw his hands up and said, What do I have to do to foul this guy to stop the clock? With 2.58 to go, Alexander picks up his fourth. And take a look now for that Carmelo Anthony bump in the head. He and look like Johnny Gilbert collided. And that's another knot on his head that <laughs> Carmelo Anthony had to suffer. He's been a marked man in the second half. That one was by pure accident. And how about Billy Edelin? He's come up big in the tournament for Syracuse. He's battled some off the court problems in his career. But he is solid for Jim Beheim's team right now. 57-42. Price. Alexander pulls. Rebounded by Anthony. Well, there's no back down by Carmelo Anthony on the defensive glass. 2.34 remaining. As Alexander fouls Edelin again. The winner here will play the winner. Of Texas Michigan State, which is coming up next. Final four next week in New Orleans, and that's Julie Beheim, the wife of Jim Beheim, and she was a coach last year when Coach Beheim was diagnosed with prostate cancer. She was by his side as the family marched right through it. That's the first one to go. Now they're going to fall a lot easier because obviously the orange men can smell it. And you can bet Jim Beheim would like to set his clock two minutes and 33 seconds fast. <laughs> 2.33 and counting. Each second that goes by is like gold dust for these fans here in Albany, these Syracuse fans. And a foul coming up against the orange. And that's Edelin. Sixteen foul against Syracuse. Cajun bound. We'll see. Johnston. Got it. Oklahoma out of timeouts, remember. McNamara. You don't want to foul him. To Anthony. And he gets it over the line. McNamara is a 92% free throw shooter. Warren to Edelin. That's who they want to foul. But that's a good decision by Warwick. Had a two on one opportunity. But the clock is the enemy right now. And the fans know it. Here's Edelin. Wheeling. Strip and foul. You want to make that clock run. Syracuse 59-45 don't forget coming up next the regional final in the south the seven seeded Michigan State Spartans against the top seeded Longhorns from Texas all smiles on the Syracuse bench 148 to go. Hollis Price. Edelin and Warwick miscommunicating. Johnston. Now a rod. Back out to Price. A rod. He's fouled. With 131 to go. Heavy a rod will shoot three. And I'm always amazed again with this kind of lead. Yeah, you want to cover the shooters. No need to leave your feet, particularly Hakeem War, who can just extend and make it difficult for even a 6 5 guy like Evie Ara to shoot over. You know, those are the things you got to think about fundamentals down the stretch. Even in a game like this, they get to the final four. Those are the things that are going to count. Evie Ara shooting three. And are you surprised with how easily Syracuse has handled Oklahoma today? 
I'm surprised the fact that Oklahoma had such difficulty handling the 2 3. Not that it's easy to do, but at times it looked as though they didn't even have a clue. And I'm sure Kelvin Sampson went over and over again how they wanted to attack, but they just couldn't execute out on the floor. Syracuse manhandled Oklahoma on the boards on both ends, and really, essentially, they took their heart. Marat, two of three. Syracuse out rebounding Oklahoma today 34 to 28. Now McNamara gets it over the line. Oklahoma backing off a bit. But even at 34 to 28 it's not the types of rebounds. A lot of these rebounds are coming here late in the game for Oklahoma. You know the misses of the long rebounds but at the critical points in the game Syracuse is limiting Oklahoma to one and out. Not many offensive putbacks for Oklahoma. Syracuse has been to the final four three times. They lost to Kentucky in 75, Indiana in the championship game in 87 on Keith Smart's jump shot. And then in 96 to Kentucky. And it looks like they are heading back. Johnston off the mark. Anthony with the rebound. 50 seconds to go. The Syracuse Orangemen led by a true freshman, Carmelo Anthony. You got to take your hat off to the Oklahoma Sooners, though. They got here despite the injuries to Hollis Price, to Ebby Arah. They battled, but they just couldn't come up with the goods against a Syracuse team that just seems primed and destined to be a player in this Final Four. Dwayne inside. McNeil with the rebound puts it in. 19.2 to go. Hollis Price on the baseline. Anthony, how fitting with the rebound. And Orange Sunday in Albany. Syracuse is heading for New Orleans. So Syracuse becomes the third team to advance to the final four joining Marquette and Kansas a number one seed is yet to advance to this year's final four Carmelo Anthony what a game and what a career for Hollis Price our Chevrolet players of the game Anthony 20 and 10 Hollis Price didn't have a great afternoon but he's had a great career at Oklahoma. The final 63-47. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel in New York right after this.